Ooh, remove that. Guys, welcome to episode 33 of the Digital Commando show. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. It's going to hide my hair under here. Um, yeah, so I've been speaking to some clients uh, lately, and some of them have said, look, it's, you've got some fantastic guests on. We're learning so much about them, but we don't know much about you. So I wanted to take the opportunity today for, guys to, every, for you guys to ask me questions, ask me whatever you want to ask. Um, I'll give you as much information as I can in the next kind of half an hour. Um, and yeah, you can literally ask me anything, anything to do with pretty much any of the guests we've had on, um, anything to do with motivation, mindset, stuff that we're doing as a business, um, anything to do with marketing, web design, anything you like. So it's a great opportunity to do this. So start throwing them comments in. We have had some comments come in and some questions that have come in before the show. Uh, one of the ones I get asked so much um, because of the brand and because of the digital commando side is, um, have I ever been in the military? But before I ask, before I answer it, um, if anybody wants to join me on the show, then please, please drop in the comments that you want to join me and I'll send you a link and you can come on with me and join me right here in front of everyone. Tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about your business. Um, and yeah, ask me a question. So if you do want to do that, then please do drop it in the comments and I'll keep an eye out for you. Um, but yeah, so have I ever been in the military? Contrary to my uh, slightly more puffy demise than I used to have, I was in the military, spent eight years in the Royal Signals. Um, I've done everything from kind of anti-terrorism, bomb disposal, um, all that sort of stuff. Started off in communications, absolutely loved it. Did a, uh, started off in Germany, then did a tour of Iraq, and then spent a bit of time around the UK and then working in London uh, before I went to bomb disposal. I think somebody really didn't like me when they sent me to bomb disposal. So for those that know me will know that I'm colorblind. Um, not probably the best place to send somebody that's colorblind in all honesty is it um but i went didn't really enjoy it lots of people go that must have been really exciting I found it a bit boring i guess um because you're always sitting around waiting for something to happen and normally when it does it's not very exciting um it's, it's probably the least thing you want to do is go there's a bomb over there's anybody want to go over there no not really um so that's a kind of a little bit about my army background. Happy to answer any questions on that as well. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Don't feel like um, I would be where I am today without that background and that experience that I gained from the military, especially the, the leadership side, the discipline side that you get from that as well. Um, I have a first question in. So we've got, I'll throw it onto the screen so everyone can see. What is the hardest part uh, when starting off, a, starting off in digital marketing? What was your experience? Uh, like when getting getting into the industry. So my journey into the industry was a little bit different, I guess. So I obviously left the military and wanted to do something. And I was like, okay, right, what do I need to do? Well, I would like to make some money. Um, and I thought, right, number one, what industry makes loads of money? And I thought, right, no brainer, that must be finance. Finance must make loads of money. So I'm going to go and work in finance, no experience. And then I was like, what country makes the most money? And I thought, everybody's rich in Dubai, right? I'm gonna go and work in finance and in Dubai. So I went and did that. And I went and got a job out there as a business development manager. And my job was essentially to go and find high net worth individuals and introduce them to consultants. And that was quite good, but I didn't realize that you only get like a small amount of what the consultants get paid. And I was kind of like, do you know what? I'm doing all this hard work. I'm not really getting much for it. And as time went on, I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the, the network and the side and meeting people. So after about a year or so, I decided, you know what, I'm going to leave leave finance, take the money that I've kind of made in finance and start an events management company. And I kind of got into that and really, really enjoyed it. The business got really big and I had all the other events companies coming to me going, Stefan, your events are absolutely booming. How do you get so many people to the events? And I said, well, I'm like marketing them online. And I didn't really have much experience. I was kind of self-taught at this point. And they said, oh, well, if we pay you, would you be happy to market our events for us and we'll pay you for everyone that turns up and I was like you're going to pay me I don't even have to do the event yeah that sounds good and then the business naturally evolved from an events company into an events marketing company and then a marketing company so I suppose the hardest part when I first started was was learning so once I kind of I kind of fell into this job and then was like all right I really need to kind of up my game I'm starting to compete against some big boys now um, so I started to do online courses. Um, so my first course that I did, and this is hilarious. Um, I went and bought a 30 pound course from Groupon, which was for anybody that's familiar with the Shore Academy, they, they kind of sell through Groupon. And it cost me about 30 quid. 
no lie um and i did this course religiously really kind of got stuck in and thoroughly enjoyed it and after that like 30 quid course which got me a diploma in digital marketing right um i decided to do another course and the second course was an advanced diploma in digital marketing which was about 60 quid on groupon so these were my only qualifications and i decided to move back to the uk um and i was like okay right i want to do something new the industry had kind of got a bit funny in dubai with the with the property crisis and i decided right i'm going to move back to uk missing home a little bit and i'm going to go and get a job there i'm going to try and follow this passion of digital marketing so that's what i did i came back and i applied for jobs um, and I wanted to work in an agency. I didn't want to do marketing for a company. So I ended up applying for jobs and I got a job on like 45K a year with zero real qualifications and quite limited experience. Um, and I kind of threw myself in as a digital marketing manager for an agency where my team actually had like degrees in marketing, which was bonkers. Um, so I kind of threw myself into it, really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and that was quite a big learning curve for me. But I started to notice things that I didn't like about the agency I was working with in the sense that I just don't feel they were putting the value to the client. It was like going back to my finance days in Dubai, where some of the things that they were doing, I like, just didn't sit with me very ethically. Um, it wasn't kind of, oh, we'll invest the money with um, the thing that's best for the client. It's we're going to invest the money with the thing that gets you the most commission. And the agency I was working with, just I kind of felt that they were chasing the money rather than um, trying to do the best job for the client. And I think I thought, well, I said, I can definitely do this better. And I tried to suggest some things to the directors. They wouldn't really listen. So I was like, well, I'm going to go out and do this on my own. Um, I'm going to do it better. And that's what I did. And that's how we kind of got started in Sigma, um, which was Sigma obviously before the Digital Commando Academy. Um, and yeah, so the hardest part was that learning curve and really finding where to get education from. And I think it really comes down to finding things that are current. Um, now, there are lots of people giving away fantastic information, not only on this show, but also on things like YouTube and things like that. You can get loads and loads of info. There's some fantastic courses out there. Um, this one's quite good. Um, no, I'm going to see it. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, where's it gone? The Digital Commando Academy. Um, that's probably the best one. I would recommend that for everybody. Uh, but there's loads of courses out there, and I would really recommend people go and find the paid courses, not the stupid expensive ones that are like tens of thousands of pounds, but the kind of in the middle ones. You want to be paying a few hundred um, for a decent course and do your research. Make sure they've got some feedback and there's some people that have said, we've done the course, we've benefited from it. Um, to be honest, if you're on a budget, the Groupon course was very, very good. And actually the Shore Academy are giving away a free like mini digital marketing course at the minute, I think. So um, I would, I haven't done it, recommend that as well. So um, yeah, no, great question, Sarah. Thank you very much. Let's go on to another one. So we've got, what are the best and worst things for you, uh, for, for you and your business about, um, whoop, about the current lockdown and pandemic situation? Best and worst things, I suppose, the best thing uh, that I've come out of it is the optimism. Like there's so many op like optimism and opportunity. There's so many opportunities out there during this time, which I really, really like. Um, it's great to see businesses improvising, and adapting and overcoming their current situations and putting themselves into maybe or outside of their comfort zone to develop and grow their business, maybe in a kind of different uh, angle so that they can still support customers um, mainly online at the minute. So it's really great to see that. And I think lots of businesses are going to come out of this whole experience a lot stronger because of that. Um, so I think that's probably one of the best things I have seen come out of uh, the lockdown at the minute. Um, and I suppose the worst thing, what would be the worst thing that's come out of it? I did think about this actually while I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, the worst thing to come out of the pandemic would probably be so there's quite a lot of negativity. Um, the, the financial side is is very hard for lots of people. Um, I would probably say, yeah, it would it would be that. It would be the kind of negative stigma around it. And there are lots of businesses that are struggling now. And I do feel for lots and lots of businesses that haven't got the opportunity to switch it up and do things online. Um, and I think that's it. I think the government, we won't go into too much politics, but I don't think they've been very transparent. Um, and they've been a little bit slow to react on things, which is a shame. But overall, I think everybody is moving forward uh, quite well. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. I'm going to get into politics. Nobody wants to talk politics at 11 o'clock on, on, a, on a Thursday morning. Um, Dave, what am I having for lunch? See, this is really bad. Dave knows me. This is why. And what I'm having for lunch? It's an interesting question because I talk about routine quite a lot um, and about habits for success. So 
like there's certain things you should eat and shouldn't eat in the day. Now we go to, uh, before lockdown, we used to go to lots of networking meetings. Now, one of the things I used to hate about going to a networking meeting was, well, what, why do you like <laughs> go to a networking meeting at lunch, lunchtime? And I would find that, right, okay, the meal, which is pretty much set, you've got a couple of options, but it's pretty much set. Um, okay, you can have a burger and chips or fish and chips or something like that, or a veggie burger. Now, that's quite a big stodgy meal for a lunchtime. It used to really tire me out. I think anybody knows that if you have a load a load of food at once, you know how we all feel after a Sunday dinner. You're kind of quite lethargic. You're quite tired. Um, and I used to go, I, I really didn't like this. I was like, oh, I'm not as productive the rest of the day if I'm doing a networking meeting and eating a big burger for lunch. Um, so I am trying to get into it. I do forget to have lunch quite a lot. I'm so guilty for this. I don't recommend it at all. Uh, but today, Dave, to answer your question, for lunch, I'm having a really funky salad. Um, this Some people would either love this or hate this. I learned it from an ex-girlfriend of mine. And basically, I just get a big bowl. I throw loads of seafood in it. So it'll have like, what have I got in there today? Mussels and um, some squid and some prawns and stuff. And then I'll just throw a load of, uh, what's it called? Lime on it. Loads and loads and loads of lime. Probably like three or four limes in there with a little bit of coriander. And mix it all together. A little bit of salt and pepper. And that's it. That's what I have for lunch. And I might put a bit of leaves on it or something. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm going to have for lunch today. Uh, Richard. What do I do for fun? Um, so this is quite an interesting one. We've spoke about this on like Monday motivation uh, episodes where when you're having like a really bad day, and I, and we don't, I never like to refer to it as a bad day anymore. Um, I think we have bad moments. I learned that from a coach called Kevin that we don't have bad days. We just have moments where we feel like we're just not feeling it at the time. Now, when I feel like that, I try and mix it up. I want to do something a bit different. So I try and take myself out of that situation. Now, it's very difficult now in lockdown, I suppose. So lots of people, I say, just go and grab a cup of tea if it makes you feel better or go and do something like that. What I do for fun, Richard, is I will normally, if I'm really kind of like, do you know what, I'm just not feeling it today, and we're not manic with work at that particular point and I can afford to go out of the office, then I'll just kind of go like indoor snowboarding in Milton Keynes or uh, Tamworth or something. I'll just go, do you know what, I'm going to go and have some fun. Go and get it out of my head. Boom get onto the slopes and then um then i'll feel loads better and that's what i would do for fun also love paintballing big paintballer um for anybody that watched a couple of, a couple of lives i did i think back end of last year for charity or the beginning of this year for charity it might be um we did a bit of a facebook run uh we raised about 200 pound in 24 hours uh, to help one of our friends who was trying to raise a thousand pound for uh, a fantastic fantastic local charity called safe line uh, who support victims of sexual abuse and rape. So uh, we wanted to help her out. So I said, for everybody, if we can raise 200 quid, I will do the dash. And one of my friends actually joined me, James. Um, we'll do a dash in front of, there was about 20 paintballers there. And I thought, if anybody's being paintball, and what they normally do is they get you to stand, like everybody will stand down one side of the, the kind of court, or whatever you call it, and you will run across and they'll all shoot at you. Well, they didn't do this to us. And honestly, people watch the video. It is it's dire. It was Clara and everything coming out. It was, it was awful. Um, they made us run through. Like, everybody's directly in front of us. And they made us run through everybody to get to the other side. So you keep getting shot by people with paintballs that move at 200 miles an hour from about a meter away. And there was blood and everything. Oh, God, horrible. If you don't like blood, don't watch the video. But it, it, but it raised money for charity, so it was good. So weirdly enough, Dave. Oh, sorry. <laughs> weirdly enough, Richard. I do that kind of stuff for fun. Um, I like anything that's challenging, anything that's kind of a big adrenaline rush. Used to be a really, really big windsurfer. Uh, that's why I've got all my Twitter followers, to be honest. They don't follow me from marketing. They follow me because I was a windsurfer. Um, and, yeah, so big windsurfer as well. Anything that gives that kind of really real good adrenaline rush. Um, what's Katie saying? Not crab. No. Katie says this because we had a conversation. And I, I bought a crab the other day, and it was horrible. It was absolutely disgusting. I absolutely hated it. I do not eat crab anymore. It was not my favorite. Uh, so there will be no crab in my uh, seafoody type salad today, Katie. Not to worry. Um, next question. Three tips for successful Facebook adverts. Okay, I like that one. Um, 
I like all of them, but I like particularly that as well. Because obviously this is my area where I excel. So I'll try not to talk for too long on this one. Three top tips for success on Facebook ads. Number one, remember your sales process. Now, just because you're online doesn't mean that you don't have to follow the same sales process as you would do if you're working in a high street shop. If somebody comes into you on the high street, the first thing you're going to do is introduce yourself. You're going to say, hello, nice to meet you. This is me. Um, that's what you need to do on Facebook ads as well an initial introduction before you sell things to people. The next thing you do when you're in the high street is you'll educate your clients um, or the customers about what they're about to sell, whether that's a dress or something to eat. It doesn't really matter. They'll talk, you'll talk to them and go, this is really good and this is why and this is all the benefits and blah, blah, blah. You need to do that on Facebook as well. So you need to take the time to educate people on um, your products or services. Again, before you sell to them. And then once you feel that those people, and there are, so algorithms that we use within the Facebook advertising that you learn as part of the academy, um, where once people, once you know uh, people have had that introduction, they've watched your stuff and you've um, got a bit of rapport to them and they're engaging with you quite frequently, then that's kind of like the really, really hot leads. And that's when you would sell, sell to people. And the best way, kind of tip number three, I guess, would be to uh, put in a sales offer use a sales offer, do something to entice those people that have maybe just kind of been sitting on the fence a little bit. They're watching your stuff. They're kind of, I'm tempted, I'm tempted, I'm tempted. And then you put an offer in front of them and it will convert. So um, that would kind of be, okay, that could be one tip. That could be three, would be follow the sales process. I suppose with Facebook ads, the, the other things are make sure you mix up your creative, make sure you create it's interesting. I would always say use video. Um, now we've spent tens of thousands, if not more, pounds and dollars in Facebook advertising over the last eight years, a ridiculous amount of money. And we have not had, I would say less than 1% of every campaign that we've ever run has been more successful using images than it has been using video. So video is so, so strong. If you can get professional video shot, it doesn't cost like a ridiculous amount of money. And there's lots of great videographers out there. So for anybody that watched the, was here at the beginning of the show and saw the um, the show intro, all of that was filmed by uh, our guy, Charlie, who's absolutely brilliant. Um, if anybody wants Charlie's details, he's in the Stratford-upon-Avon area and he does fantastic video. Um, so he filmed that for us. It was really, really great. Um, and then he's done loads of other stuff. So we've got our ads and stuff where I'm walking around the forest. If anybody's seen them, it's the background to the Digital Commando Academy Facebook page. Um, so you can see that tells you a bit more about the academy and things. Um, and yeah, that was all shot by Charlie as well. So yeah, absolutely follow the sales process. I think it's so, so key. Um, guys, for anybody who's joining me late, if anybody wants to join me on the show and come into the room, then I'm more than happy to bring you in and ask me a question. Come and join me. We've got a really cool background now. There was actually, I need to say a huge thank you to Simon, who's done our uh, the graphic behind here. For anybody who didn't see it, I'll quickly show you. So that's our graphic that we've obviously had done by Simon. Did it really, really quick for us. Um, absolutely brilliant. Really like that compared to the kind of makeshift one that we had before. Um, so Simon, thank you for doing that. Guys, yeah, if you want to jump on and join me, then you absolutely can. Uh, but feel free, throw the questions in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer. I want to know anything you're struggling with at the minute, whether that's um, anything marketing related, web related, business related. Um, if it's something I can help you with now, then I will. If it's not, I will find somebody that can help you. So it's a good time. Uh, very well connected. Lots and lots of great clients. So there's always someone that can answer your questions. Um, so one of the other things that we've had come in, so we had about, obviously, was I ex-army ex or military? Absolutely. We did veteran owned week last week. Uh, we will be doing that again because it was so popular. Uh, we got, oh, I don't actually know how many veterans we got on the show that week, quite a lot. Um, so we had veterans on the show that own businesses. We were talking about that last week. That was really, really cool. Um, we're doing a, another funky week um, that's not military related, but we've got some really cool business owners that have got one particular hobby that is really interesting. And they'll be joining us, um, who Katie knows, I think. Uh, Katie's still on. So yeah, that's that's what we'll be, uh, we, we're still planning that one. It's taken a little bit longer than we thought, but we're doing that. Uh, we might be going down to one show a day. Um, so uh, or we might only do a couple of evening shows a week just because it's really busy. Uh, we'd love to do two a day, but it does get hard. Um, there we go. Matthew, what's the best way to launch a Facebook 
business page. Whoa, I'm going to be, I'm going to stick to my laurels here. And I would say advertising, Facebook ads. Um, one of the things that lots of a big misconception that people get, and it's the scariest thing, but I always advise people not to do it straight away. Do not buy followers. And do not invite your friends to like your page. These are like the two big, big things that I absolutely, I hate, but it's a big mistake. And I completely understand why people do it because you don't want to have a page that's empty. I would say maybe the first 10 people you can get away with having um, a couple of friends on there just to kind of play the, play the Facebook algorithm so it gets seen. But um, after that, try not to invite friends to the page because when you're doing demographic targeting using Facebook ads and things, what it will do is it will target it will look at your friends, like your target demographic, and it will start to try and find people like them. Now, they're not your target audience. So just be just be aware of that. So don't try and invite friends. Don't buy followers. Not that anybody on here would. But if you buy followers, again, you've got the algorithm on Facebook using your ad to try and target people in Thailand or something, wherever these followers have come from. So please, please don't do that. Um, the best way to launch, I would say, really good Facebook ads campaign. Make sure you've optimized the page. If you've got a video background, that's really cool. Uh, make sure you've filled in all of the information and that's all good to go. And then when you wanna drive people to it, um, absolutely Facebook ads, depending on your market as well. So if you're targeting local, uh, you can do really, really good local Facebook ads um, or obviously the wider region as well. You can. You can look at the kind of bigger picture, but then also go back to uh, the return on investment on it. So, yeah, Matthew, just be aware. Try to think yourself: what is the purpose of why do you want? Um, what what do you want to do? What do you, what is the kind of you say launch the the Facebook page? But what do you want to get in return? Is that followers? Is it because you want to sell to those followers? Um, because actually, we sell lots to lots of people that don't actually ever see our Facebook page, to be honest. Um, they'll see the ads that we run from our Facebook page, but they won't necessarily ever actually see the page. Um, but I would say, yeah, create value added content. This is so key. So this is one of the things we do now with the show, create value added content, um, do a video, videos are great. Obviously I won't stop preaching videos, um, but add value with the content and then boost those, not literally boost, but create Facebook ads with that post in mind. Um, and then promote that to what you think is your target audience. And you can go into loads of detail with that as well. Uh, but initially, find out who's your demographic, do some testing, and get those ads out there. And that will naturally start to boost up your page, start to build up your your following and your engagement. Um, and because you can, anybody who does engage, you can then obviously invite them to the page and things like that. So you'll naturally grow it that way. But by adding that value added content, and that's all I would say on a page. Like I don't personally think, and my perspective, um, the way that we sell, none of our clients have sales ads on their Facebook pages. We don't agree with it. Um, we think your sales ad should be like a shop window where people can come past and go, wow, that's all really beautiful. But you don't need to sell anything. You just need to bring people in. That's all it's for. Once people are in, then you sell to them. Um, so when people are engaging and all the rest of it, then you target them with great Facebook ads that give them an offer, but they don't need to be shown on your page. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Matthew. If you want anything else, just let me know. Uh, Alex, my man, how would you go about advertising for travel to Bali right now, even though people are not wanting to spend money or allowed to travel? This is a really good question. Um, and you do fantastic trips to Bali. I genuinely would love to get, get on one. Um, like Alex has been going for a while, guys. He does incredible trips to Bali. Like, it's all kind of, he's worked it all out. Everything's kind of included. Um, the best way to advertise that at the minute, I would say is you've got great content, great video, great imagery. I would lead generate at the minute. So instead of trying to direct sell, just build up your database. So get your ads out, um, start creating loads of, loads of content, get some success stories and do some videos around that. Anybody that's done the trips before, try and get them to do videos now for you to say, we were on the trip with Alex, it was absolutely fantastic. These are the things that we really liked. Here's some tips for people that are thinking about doing it. Do some videos around that um, and yeah, promote that content and do lead generation. So start to build up a database of people that are ready to travel so that when we're more aware of what's going on with the travel restrictions, you can then say, right guys, for everybody that was interested, our next trip is in January for argument's sake, who's interested? And by that point, um, you'll have such a big database that you should be able to just completely sell those out really, really quickly. Um, that's how I would go about it. Um, I think that's the best, that's the only thing really the travel industry can do at the minute, it is a struggle. I know that if we look at some of the big players, um, 
I've had loads of emails advertising cheap trips to um, where is it the Maldives and stuff, which I would love to go to. But at the same time, I'm not going to now go and spend ten grand on a trip to the Maldives when we've got that uncertainty that it might get cancelled. And people do worry about that. People do worry about travel businesses going out of business. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily try and sell to anybody at the minute. I would just lead generate. Um, and I hope that answers your question, Alex. Um, Dave, where do I get my <laughs> You idiot. Um, take my hat off. I've never taken my hat off on this show. I tell you what, if anybody stays to the end of the show, I will answer that question. I'm not going to tell you about your haircut. But there's a funny story behind it, which is why Dave's asking the question. Um, so if you stay to the end of the show, I'll show you. Uh, I will take my hat off. But I will delete it for the replays. Um, I hope I can do that. Uh, next one is now the uh, oh, is now with most potential customers at home and on social media the best time for marketing. I genuinely believe it is now. Depending on your business, um, this can change. But now is a great time to market. Everybody's online. We've looked. Facebook spiked. Instagram spiked. Um, Lots of the other platforms have spiked as well. TikTok's going crazy. Um, but I think now is a great time to market. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I say to people to do this now. From our perspective and the clients we work with, our Facebook ad spend, we're getting a much, much higher return on investment than we were pre-lockdown when everybody was still advertising. Now, because the competition is now lower, it means that we're getting a higher return on investment. So from our leads that we were generating for like eight pound each, we're now getting them for like 50p which is crazy. That's a massive, massive, 400% return on investment, easy, if not a lot more than that. My mouse is great. Um, so yeah, I think I would absolutely do it now. Now, one of the things to bear in mind with this is that Facebook are obviously rolling out their initiative to help small businesses where they're going to be giving funding away. And hopefully everyone will apply for that. And if anybody wants a link, let me know because you can still apply. Now they're starting to roll this out and they've rolled it out in a couple of the states of America. It's not hit the UK yet. Now, when it hits the UK, if you get that funding, then great. But if you don't get that funding, you're competing against other businesses that have got that money for free. Now, that's not taking any hit on their business because it's got it for free. And because there's more spend than on the Facebook ads platform, your return on investment is going to be lower because the, comp the competition is much higher. So be aware of this. Now is really, really, really cheap to advertise. Plus, organic reach is really high. Um, especially if you're doing live streams, you're using things like LinkedIn, TikTok. Um, these are great, great platforms to be using at the minute if you've got a limited budget. Um, and I would say if you've not got a limited budget, take advantage of this anyway because you can get more for your money. Um, so absolutely, now is a fantastic time to market. And if you're in a position, like I said about to Alex a second ago, if you're not in a position to sell, it's still a fantastic time to market because you can lead generate right now, which means as soon as you're ready to start selling, huge database of people to sell to, which you've paid pittance for compared to what you would have paid. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. I can't see who that was, but um, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, I definitely, definitely, definitely do it now. Uh, Katie, yeah, I am uh, trying to be, trying to be quiet makes it, makes a change. Ha <laughs> ha, actually harder than it looks, true. But it is trying, trying to keep it quiet is hard. Um, Katie, what I'm gonna set you up with is with, Dave, actually, uh, and you guys can kind of get involved and um, there's something we can work on together. So I will uh, do that after this. Uh, oh, so this is following on from the last one. If so, how would you uh, then keep lead, I think that's where leads warm until things get back to normal? Oh, you're in a gym. All right, cool. So yeah, a great time to do that. So now you can do kind of fitness, nutrition, things that you can send out, which are all value adding. Now, if you're adding value, people keep coming back. There's a reason why people watch this show every single day. So um, if you add value in the beginning, so you start doing videos now and say, look, we're doing free workouts, uh, get an influencer or one of your gym instructors or yourself and start putting these daily workouts out. Now they need to be daily. You need to keep consistent. Consistency is key with this. Um, so do a daily workout every single day. Sign people up to your database, um, Again, you can do that through people who have engaged with your videos, retarget them using ads and say to them, so uh, we're also giving away a free nutrition guide for people at home in lockdown um, and then get their email address, ping them over a nutrition guide. That's them lead generated. 
So to keep them warm, what you're doing is consistently engaging with them every single day um, through the daily workout. And although that might cost money for the sake of, let's say, an instructor to come and do it for the day, that's still next to nothing in comparison to maybe what you would have paid before for marketing. So that would be my advice for um, owning a gym at the minute. I definitely, definitely do that. Daily workout. If you're not already doing them, um, I might know who this is. Um, if it's who I think it is, you're already doing that. So that's fine. And you, I would just consistently do it. If you're getting a good return from that in regards to engagement and people watching, then do it twice a day. This is why we did the show twice a day. We had so much of an influx um, that we decided to kind of throw, go down, double down on it um, and start doing it more. So I would absolutely say to do that that way. Um, going to the next one. Uh, Matthew, so what were we talking about a minute ago? Uh, okay, so sales nationwide. So we were talking about how the how to, how to obviously grow your Facebook page and we looked at doing it local. If you're doing it nationwide, absolutely fine. It's just different targeting. Um, so you're going to target people obviously within the nation. Depends on your product, you might target bigger cities, you might target villages, depends on the product itself. Um, and I would say, yeah, to again, target down that demographic. Now there's certain things you can do called layering. Um, I've never spoke about layering on here before. Um, and it's something we don't really talk about too much outside of the academy because it's like our top secret tip in Facebook advertising. Um, now there's certain things you can do in layering where essentially what you can say is when people do different demographic targeting in Facebook, which most people that have ever done a Facebook ad will have seen, you can say, I wanna target people that are really interested in fishing, okay? And then you overlap that with, okay, fishing, things all related to fishing, da, 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 da. And then you target people to say, I really want them to be in this area. So you just target UK if you were looking national, nationwide. Now, some of the other things you can do to really mix up your marketing is, let's say you're targeting fishing, but you want to capture people's attention. So you want to target people that, um, let's say, like Game of Thrones. So Game of Thrones fans that also like fishing. Then you create a video where, and again, you can be as creative as you like this, maybe doing a fishing. And when you pull something out of the, the water, it's, I don't know, a dragon or something. Like one of the things from Game of Thrones, if you've got like a Game of Thrones themed video, you capture the attention of the people straight away because they're probably seeing loads of fishing stuff anyway uh, from all your competitors. Capture them with one of their interests. That'll get them to engage with you. And you can actually create your Facebook ads on layers where you can say, right, only target people that like Game of Thrones, and you can have all your Game of Thrones related keywords, and then people that like fishing and all those keywords, and you can you can add as many layers as you want really, I think it's about 11. Um, so I would say that is something that makes it really different. That makes you really different to your competitors and you'll find like people will definitely engage with you. Um, so there's a little tip, anybody wants to know more about layering, layering, um, give me a shout because in all honesty, I've never heard anybody in the Facebook ads market talk about layering. And I think it's because they don't know how to do it. But uh, for each to their own, isn't it? Makes us better. Dave, do I actually want the microphone to work? I do. I genuinely, genuinely do. Um, now, this one's quite funny. So for everybody who watches these videos, I've always got a really cool microphone and it doesn't actually work. I just do it because I like the cosmetic side. It looks good. Um, I do want it to work, Dave, and I will make it work. So what extent have I gone to? Let's give people a bit of a background. So the first thing I did was I wanted to have a microphone for obviously the podcast and everything else. So I bought the microphone, plugged it into the computer, and it wouldn't work. So I spoke to one of my friends and I said, dude, why is my microphone not working? And he said, you probably need one of these boxes, which is called like, oh, I can't remember what it's called, Miracle Power or something the power box thing, somebody in AV will know what I'm on about. Um, so you need this this box. So if anybody's seen it, it's normally the ones with like the sliders they have in the radios, but you can get like mini ones with little turny knobs and stuff. So you need to plug the microphone into that and then that into your laptop and then it'll work. So I went and bought this box thing, quite expensive, plugged it in, didn't work. So then I thought maybe it's the cable, maybe I need a different cable, so maybe the cable's broken because it's just a bit crackly, I can't, you can't really hear very well. So I went and bought some new cables. So I've gone down the extent of buying the microphones, the cables, this, this mixer box thing, and it still isn't working. Um, 
So I bought a new computer. <laughs> we'll see if that fixes the problem and the new computer is getting delivered tomorrow. So very, very excited. So I would like it to work, Dave. I'm going to every extent to get these microphones to work. And hopefully after lockdown, um, potentially I can get some some experts come around in that area and, and make it work. How I can't make it work, I've got no idea. But in the army, they did call me Magneto because every bit of electrical equipment I went near used to stop working. This is potentially why they sent me to bomb disposal because if I go anywhere near it, it probably won't even go off. Probably what happened. Um, but guys, we've kind of we've got five minutes over where I wanted to go a bit. Um, for everybody who joined today, I hope you got a bit more of an insight, got some questions answered there. Um, Keep asking questions if you want. If you're watching it on the replay, I will keep an eye on this anyway, so I will answer any of your questions. If anybody's got anything particularly technical they want answered, I'm happy to do a video just on that subject um, so I can share that with everybody. If it's something that lots of people are asking for, more than happy to do that. Um, but, guys, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, and, yeah, we'll be back with the show tomorrow for Fitness Friday. Uh, we've got some more guests on there. But, yeah, really enjoying doing the show. Um, uh, for, uh, for everybody who's sent me in feedback about it, um, I really do appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad that lots of people are getting benefit from it um, and, and yeah, and learning things. So, um, yeah, we're going to keep going. As long as you guys keep giving good feedback and feeding my ego, uh, I'll keep doing it. No, in a serious note, as long as people are benefiting from it, then I, I, we will keep doing the show. Oh, no, I thought I got away with it. I thought I got away with it. Oh, Okay. Time to show the hair. Okay, so there's a theory behind this. Now, my hair grows like crazy, right? Um, for anybody that has seen me about how on, my hair's normally quite wild anyway. Now, what was happening was it was coming out of the side of the hat. For anybody that watches any of the shows from last week, like all my hair was coming outside, and it was really, really, really annoying me. So, as everyone knows, we can't get to a hairdresser at the minute, and I live on my own. So, I might have tried to do it myself um so i will share this but i'm gonna do it really quick because i don't want this to be online for very long so nobody screenshot if anybody screenshots i'm blocking you from the page all right so we'll be warned so this is my hair which is not look, some people might go that's not too bad like i can probably put it i, I can probably is it who else on here can now put their hair in like a, a ponytail or a top knot so I can do that, but um, which looks kind of all right. It's just shaved on the sides. Now, the, where Dave was going with this is because the funny bit is um, that. <laughs> so I've got a full on mullet, um, which people like to remind me when I go into the shop. What's all that hair at the back? Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit of a mix between a, um, a Peaky Blinder and, and whatever else has a mullet. Not the best look. Can't wait for the hairdressers to open. If anybody wants to cut my hair, then please do drop me a line. It would be much appreciated. Um, if you can do it from two meters away, even better. But who cares? Uh, <laughs> not going to break the rules. I'll, I'll hold it out. I'll wait out. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. You've all been amazing. Really appreciate all your support um, and all your input and all your questions. But I'll be back tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And for now, that is it. Don't tell anybody about my hair. Peace out.